And today we brought a message to share with you about how to be strong and courageous. We're going through difficult seasons in Israel. It's almost all the time, you know, when we woke up on 7th of October and we have heard some sirens and uh, it, was, it wasn't something new. We kind of used to living in a war situation from time to time. We have different things and we have learned through the crisis how to be strong and courageous. And I believe that your nation since uh, 2020, like all the world, is going a little bit crazy. Am I right? How you feel it, yeah, you, you, you don't know what to expect. I, I stop wishing, uh, you know, on the New Year's resolution some uh, good stuff because I, I don't know, <laughs> I don't know, you know, and Jesus didn't promise us a good life. This is a good news from Israel, okay? Jesus, Jesus promised us that we will have troubles in this world, but he overcome this world and we can stand strong, Amen. And I believe that God wants us to prepare for the crisis to come. We don't know. I don't know. I'm, I'm not a prophet, but I have no idea what's, what's going to happen next. But I truly believe that God wants to make us stronger and, and encouraged today, that we will face this crisis and we will keep standing. Amen? And this is what happened with us, we as a, as a whole group. And actually, I'm so, I'm so proud that Yulesh is with us because we actually have been in one boat in all this, in all this season we, we, we faced on 7th of October. And we were strong as a team, you know. We didn't run away. We, we, didn't, we didn't, you know, hide in a bomb shelter for, the, for a whole month. But on the third day, we were already at the hospital delivering gifts to the kids. You know, we were ready. We were strong and courageous because we learned how to depend on God and not on circumstances in our life. And this is what I want you to, I want to encourage you to be strong and courageous, to have an idea what does it mean. Okay, you ready? So Joshua uh, chapter 1, we all know this, this passage of the scripture that Joshua actually got encouraged by God himself. The great I am told him, this is my command. God commanded him. He didn't suggest, he didn't say, if you will do such and such, you will be. He just commanded. Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or discouraged for the Lord, your God is with you wherever you go. And this is understanding what keeps us strong in the, in the middle of the crisis I'm speaking right now. Probably you're going through difficult certain circumstances in your life, in your relationships, in your business, in your family. And you think, God, how can I do that? And you, you, you're afraid. You don't know. It's, it's human, human nature to be afraid. And Joshua was afraid because he supposedly to stand up and not, you know, Moses, he was a great leader. And he is, I mean, he, he's a great leader in Israel. But... You know, everything, Moses is passed and, and, and Joshua needs to lead a huge crowd of, of people who spend all their life in desert. They never seen, you know, uh, miracles of the Lord and stuff like that. And Joshua, I guess he was quite scared. How can I do that? How can, how can we face it? And God commanded him, be strong. I am with you. I am with you. So let's learn a little bit of Hebrew. You ready? You like Hebrew language? The words strong and courageous in Hebrew, and we're going we're gonna to study this uh, this morning. So, so the word strong, it sounds like chazak. Can you repeat after me? Chazak. Can you do it again? Chazak. You're doing, you're doing good. You have nice pronunciation here in, in Jacksonville. Well done. By the way, how is my English? Is it is all right? You understand me? It's good. This is my this is my fourth language, uh, and right now I, you know, I speak I speak Russian, Ukrainian, Hebrew, English, tongues, and all in the same time, and trying to deliver the message. So keep keep up with us, okay? So to be strong or hazak, it's literally translated to be physically fit, fitness and health context in the Bible. 
So when God commanded Joshua, you need to be strong, he literally told him that you have to be strong physically. And I won't preach about physical fitness uh, maybe next year because I can do that. Uh, I have done several Ironmans and I run marathons and I'm, I, I, I learn how to be strong in my body. And I think this is one of the reasons why we have been able to be strong in, in, in a crisis because we were physically ready for that. Yeah. But this is another story. As I participated in endurance uh, uh, competitions like Ironman, I, I don't know if you're familiar here, it's a long distance triathlon, you, you swim, uh, bike and run for hours and hours and hours. People usually ask me a question, how in the world it's possible, how you can do it? You, you're like an Ironman, you know, they idolize, and my wife, she's the one of the fan of mine, and she's, uh, you know, idolizing me and saying, but the, the reality is, if I can go through training process, meaning every day wake up before everybody wakes up in my home and go for a run and go for, for cycling for hours and hours and hours. It's about 200 to 300 hours before the competition. It's a lot of time. When competition, so when, when the trial is come, I'm ready. And I enjoy it. Let's have fun. You know, everybody cheers you up and you finish strong. And you, you know, I, I love this feeling. So same when in our life, crisis come in our way, we need to be ready. And if we're ready, we say, come on, I can rejoice. This, this trouble it just makes me smile. Let's, let's do it. You know? So when we, when we dive into the Hebrew word and, and, and doing sports and, and all of these things, I think that God commanded Joshua to be a self-disciplined person. Wake up early than everybody. Do a little more work that everybody is doing. Pray a little more. Read your Bible a little more. Invest into your relationship. Just be consistent. And self-discipline. Who likes to be self-disciplined? Maybe two people in the room. And, you know, I, people, people ask you sometimes, you know, when you run and they see your posts and things. And it's in the morning, in the forest, you run. And, and it's, you know, it's like, it's like very cool stuff to do. And we runners, we uh, ask ourselves sometimes the question, what can be better than run five in the morning? Everything can be better than, than run five in the morning. You know, like sleeping and... Drinking your coffee and just enjoy your morning, morning time. So we don't like to be self disciplined We don't like to go through this routine. We don't like training process. But you have to learn how to enjoy it. If you want to be ready. I don't know about you, but I want to be ready. And when the spiritual attacks comes your way and you learn how to fight demons, you know how to read your Bible, you know, you, you have your prayer routine... Who can stand against you if God is with you? You know what I mean? So please, don't get lazy. Don't get lazy. Just learn how to be self-disciplined. It's not easy, but God commands us to be self-disciplined. He says, I command you. <laughs> be self-disciplined person. Wake up earlier than anyone in your family. And go read your Bible. Have your morning routine. And when the next crisis comes in your life, you will be smiling. Come on. Give me more, enemy. I, I'm ready, you know. So this is, a, this is the first, um, first idea. And God, God wants us to become strong. And this is the reason why he has not given us a spirit of fear in 2 Timothy. Hmm? Why are we afraid? Usually when bad stuff happening in our life. Because we are not ready. We are not we haven't been disciplined enough to go through our routine and to do our things when nobody sees. Like a David and Goliath, why he could do it? Because he was doing that for the whole his life. You know that David wasn't just playing on the lyre and harp and guitar. He was killing some animals, you know. Like lions and deers. Uh, not deers, but the bears. We don't have deers in, in his 
And then when, when the Goliath came his way, he says, I, I can do it. Why, why are you all afraid? God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and this is a gift from God. Let's embrace this gift. Let's practice this gift. Let's learn how to do it. We can do it. Amen? So ne next time you want to drink this soda, you will remember a fellow from Tel Aviv in the suit told you be self-disciplined. This is what God wants us to do. Amen? Okay, the second word is omets. Can you repeat after me? Omets. One more time. Omets. Good. Good job. So omets meaning act of bravery and courage in everyday life. And, you know, how we can get encouraged. I, li I like this uh, word playing and how it sounds in English. I'm going to teach you a little bit of English lessons if you want. Encouraged. We, we all want to be encouraged. We want, we want that other people will encourage us. God will encourage us. Am I right? We, we like to be around people who are encouraging us all the time. In English, if you take this prefix N, and courage, it literally means to put on courage. Okay? That you wear courage. Okay? You got it a little bit? So you, you're wearing self-discipline, okay? You're wearing... You're wearing the things God promised you and, and commanded you. And we have in Hebrew from roots of the, every word you can create some other words. And we have other word in Hebrew. It sounds like imuts. And this is mind-blowing. When I was studying that, it's just crazy. Because imuts in Hebrew mean adoption or adoption of practices or other ideas. So literal adoption, when somebody adopts a child into, into a family. And when you as a child of God, you're adopting different ideology. So you're going through the process of change your mind, okay? And this is, I don't know about you, but I, I, just, I, I just love it. Because... God adopted us into his family, amen, through, through Jesus Christ. And we are no longer slaves to fear, but we are children of the Lord. Amen? You like this idea? We all like these songs. But the reality is that in Hebrew, it moves, it's not just to be adopted, but it's to adopt ideology of your heavenly father. And this is your part. Amen, somebody. Yeah? This is your part. This is our part. Because it's the one thing on Sunday morning to sing, I'm a child of God and I'm not a slave to fear. I love this song, by the way. But the other thing is when on Monday you wake up and there is a worldly ideology waiting you on a smartphone. And at the news. And at some political opinions or enemies or whoever. And you... And you, you, if you dwell in these things <laughs> and not in the word of God, guess what? Your ideology will never change. And you will be still afraid and you will be still slave to fear. Why? Because your ideology didn't change. So our part of the whole adoption process is not just to get excited, which is, which is good, get excited. But it's not just that. We need to change the way we think. We need to change our opinions on certain matters and, and make them according to what God says. And this is what means in Hebrew, courage. So to be strong is to be self-disciplined. To be courage in Hebrew is to be adopted by Heavenly Father. And going through the process of changing your ideology. Romans chapter 8. I love this passage. For all who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God. 
So you have not received the spirit that makes you. So next time you feel like you're fearful slave to some kind of news or, or ideas or whatever, you need to do the health check, you know? <laughs> what do you believe actually? I you believe that you are a child of God and Bible is the standard of everything in your life? If you do believe and if you do practice it with self-discipline every day, you will not be faithful, uh, you will not be fearful slave. Instead, you received God's spirit when he adopted you as his own children and now we can call him Abba. Abba is a Hebrew word for daddy. You never can call your heavenly father Abba if you don't have personal relationship with him. But you don't have understanding that you are a child of God. And not just this understanding, but you live like your Abba wants. And this is what mean in Hebrew to have relationship with the Lord. To be adopted by God and adopt his ideology. You know, and when we got to these troubles and we don't know what next will come, we were ready. We were strong. We were courageous. And we used this opportunity to light up as a lamp, as a, on a stand, and be light to the world. And I want to call Natasha my beautiful part. Isn't she beautiful? Give her a huge round of applause, and she's going to share with you how to be light to the world. Awesome. Thank you so much. Good morning, church. Are you okay? Is it a good morning for you? Great. I am, I love my husband. And he is, as he already said, that he is Superman. He loves self-discipline. And I am the person who doesn't. I am very bad in it. I am more happy person than self-disciplined person. So I win everything with a joy. I drink my soda and say, I'm just happy because I drink it. <laughs> but it, what he said, it's important to do because it's God said it to us, right? So my husband, he's all kind of man. He didn't tell, but he is the volunteer in police. And the day, 7th of October, he went to his shift. It was his shift, normal shift. And they uh, driving the car because he, do, he does the patrolling. And they drive the car and it was the, one of the call was uh, shooting. And he thought that maybe, maybe it's the terrorists because the terrorists were, were all over the place. And he prayed on tons and back then he thought, so lucky, my partner is so lucky because he is with me. Because God, I know who I am, I am a child of God, I am under his protection, and everyone who is with me is safe. Because God protect us. And I really, I, I admire my husband because I call him, uh, you know, above human being. He is policeman, sportsman, Pastor man, husband man, father man, all kind of man, self-disciplined man. And I am not. Just so easy. I am not. But for us to be a light in a time of darkness, in a time of crisis, we need to have, have self-discipline, know who we are in Christ. This is so important. And we need to know our gifts. That our gift, it's actually who we are and we share it. We bring our gifts to people and this is how we become light for the world. It's not something we need to change. It's not something we need to improve of. It's something that we need to recognize because God created you already with the gifts. And my gift is the joy. 
I bring joy in every place I came. I bring joy to any situation. When my kids falling and hit their head, I'm laughing. <laughs> and some other people think that I am strange. Maybe, <laughs> but at least they stop crying. They, they face their problems with a smile on their faces. That, and I know it's something that I'm, I'm easy, it's natural for me. Maybe it, it's not natural for you to be very system person or a very, you know, strategic person, relation, yeah, relationship person, but you are very easy to not panic. You're easy going, you always have a peace in you. You don't worry about things, not because you don't think about it, it's just not coming into your heart, into your mood. And you bring this peace to all other people. When people are with me, there is no one have a panic attack. My, all the time, when something happened, my first words, like always, everything, everything is okay. Everything is okay. We will handle it. Give us some time. Let's think. No panic. Let's pray. And it helps people. So I want to give you a challenge. If you don't know your gift, this is a good, good time for self-discipline. Take your time in the morning and say, God, I want to know my gift. I want to know the gift that you put in me when I was born. It's nothing new. And I want to use it. I want to know it. I want to recognize it. And I want to use it. And I want to bring it to people, serve, and be the light for the world. And I want to read the Bible verse, the Matthew, how it's called, the Matthew 5, I think, or 4. 5, yeah. You are the light of the world. You know what it say? You not will be. If you do something, then you will get it. No, you are. You don't need to change. You need to improve, but you don't need to change. You are the light of the world already. What does it mean? It means your gifts. It means bring what Jesus put in you up. Like a city on a hilltop that cannot be hidden. No one lights a lamb and then put it under a basket. Amen? Yeah. It's not useful. Instead, a lamb is the place on a stand where it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your good deeds shine out for all to see so that everyone will praise you. No. Praise your heavenly Father. The gifts, it's not about you. Gifts, it's about God. It's about our Abba. It's about our, our Father. And I want to just show you a small illustration. I have my gifts. I have a light that God gives it to me, my joy, for example, or kindness, or servant, or generosity. And I can keep it for myself, or in the darkest time, I can share it. I can share it and show people the way for God, that they see God in this. They not see me much, but they see Heavenly Father. That the Heavenly Father put it in you and bring it to all others. And if we all get together, we can do even the disco ball <laughs> and have a lot of fun, right? Thank you so much. You can turn up the lights. Awesome. So you have gifts, but it always works better when we are together. When you're alone, you're just alone. 
Never think that you're special. When you are alone, it's not about that you are so special and nobody can work with you or you can work with anyone. It's just you alone and this is the biggest light in your life. When the war starts, first, first what we did, we go to the hospital and then we, we had a boutique store that we help people and in this tour we help people all over the who, who are in need, the people in need. And we have a lot of people who evacuated from the places where are bombed or the, it's not safe anymore. It's okay, don't worry. <laughs> so, <laughs> you see, it's, I even don't think about it. <laughs> so, and the people came and we have amazing atmosphere. We have an atmosphere of peace and joy. We have a great music, great smell. We serve a nice coffee to people. And when people come to get help, actually, they get peace. Every time that the people come to our store, they get peace, they get help. We listen to their stories, we hug them, we give them, we give them hope. And I could not do this alone. Because all our uh, store, it's only volunteers. So we gather together and we work together. We do something together. We help people together. And in Israel, it's not allowed to help and preach the gospel. It's by, uh, under criminal law, so you cannot do that. Two things, you cannot preach people under 18 and you cannot help and preach the gospel. So we not preach the gospel, but people ask us all the time, what's wrong with you? Why, we wanna just, can we just stay in this place? You have so great atmosphere, you have so much peace, we always come to get some peace in our life. The people ask us questions with no us telling them, but by the law, when the people ask, we can tell. So, when people tell, we tell. When people ask, we tell all the stories, you know? So, and I want to call my husband for this mess, for, for my third point. It's better together, stronger. We, together, we're much more stronger. And if we are alone, we cannot do enough. But when we gather together, it's so important for us be together, then the, all the power, all the unity, all the anointing come into our lives. And I wanna, pr and I wanna, sorry, hmm, yep. Ecclesiastes 4.12, a person stand alone can be attacked and defeated. That simple. How often when we are alone with our problems, we can be very easily be attacked and defeated. The lies in our thoughts. This is the first thing, I'm not good enough. They are all against me. They hate me, they don't wanna deal with me. I don't like them, he, he look at me this way, he doesn't like me, he has something on me. I'm not welcome in this place. So many thoughts when we are alone. So many lies. So when we are alone, we can be attacked and defeated. This is, this is, in my life, this is the number one rule. Never stay alone when it's bad. But for our natural, what we wanna do when we have problem, financial problem, we lost the baby. We had a problem with relationship. We lost, pro we had a, I don't know, some diagnosed with an awful disease. What do we do? We isolate it. We don't want to share it. We're not wi winners. We're not the heroes. This is the loser points. We isolate it. We not open up and we go through alone, very difficult times. And if we are alone, we defeat it. But if two 
can stand back to back. Back to back. Come on. Give me your back and I give me I give you mine. Yeah. Back to back. So now my back is covered. He's not so much because I'm smaller, you know. <laughs> but I'm lucky. <laughs> so, back to back, and they conquer. Three are even better. We need a third person. A third person. Oh, third person. Come to us. <laughs> Hello, buddy. Oh, sorry, brother. <laughs> So, can we stand back to back? Come on, let's give me your hands, good, like that. So, three are even better for a triple braided cord is not easily broken. And if someone attack me and the guys want to run away, I just hold them, they cannot. <laughs> so, they should fight for me as well. So, when we are share, and we bring, thank you so much. So when we bring our gifts, and we all together, during the war, we were so busy. So we had a volunteers who just cooked for us. They cooked for us, for all the volunteers who were running away all the places. And we didn't have time to eat. We didn't have time to think to eat. And the people just bring us fresh, home-cooked meals every day. And this, this was just so amazing. They, it was the gifting of the people. If for them, it was natural to feed all the, you know, to feed everyone. Great. I loved just these people. If you, this the cooking, if you're a gift, I'm coming to you. <laughs> this, is, this is my love language. I love food very much. So let's stay together. In the crisis, enemy want to divide us. But we need to stay together. Find why we can be together, not find the reason why we cannot be together. Because it's so easy to fuck. And then we can be strong and courageous and be the light for not only us, but for the whole world to see and praise Heavenly Father. Amen. Thank you, Natasha. And give her a huge round of applause. Thank you so much. And in the end, we, we, can, we, can we come here? And, and we want to pray for you. We want to pray for unity in the church. Because... I don't know about your church, but our congregations is very diverse. Uh, we have uh, not so many churches in Israel. In our church, we have people from all kind of denominations. We have Baptist, Pentecostal, Charismatic, actually Pentecostal and Charismatic in here. And we have Messianic uh, uh, Jews. We have uh, uh, Adventist uh, Seventh Day, more hearts in English. And we, ha we have so many different opinions, even on theological topics, sometimes when we discuss what we're going to preach about. You know, what I learned, and I believe this is why we're strong and courageous and we can be light to people in Israel. We say, hmm, let's agree to disagree, but stay together. Mm -hmm. And amen, yeah. And we are so different people, as Natasha mentioned. She admires me, but you know, it takes me. But you admire me. But you, I, I no? love you. Oh, I love okay. you. You know, as Jesus love uh, the church, this is my my duty. It's your your burden. I, I like it. I like it. <laughs> but so many times we disagree, even in our family. It's so hard to agree on some things. Don't and go there. And we just agree to disagree but we stay together yeah because we believe in unity we believe that anointing yeah. in the church depends on our decisions to yeah. stay together so let's pray Amen. church let's pray that this in this next season of journey church in the next season of your journey you will stay strong mm -hmm. 
courageous, be light to the world and be better together. Amen. Lord Jesus, we are so thankful for this honor and opportunity to encourage this amazing group of people. We ask you that your anointing will come up on their decision to stay together, fight together, be light together. Be strong together. Learn how to adapt ideology of your heavenly kingdom, Lord. And depend on you. We bless this church and bless this next, next season in their life. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 amen.